am Alias and today I am going to show you how I made my historically accurate Nezuko. Well, almost historically accurate. Keep in mind, this is still an anime character and a cosplay and at the moment I can't afford certain materials and prints but shape-wise I did my very best to create the most accurate patterns and the correct silhouette for this cosplay. For the underwear I am going to be using white cotton. Just make sure it is nice and soft because you are going to be wearing this against your skin. I also used cotton gauze for some pieces, which is a very comfortable material but extremely see-through. The first piece I'm going to make is the haragi. Now, this is not a piece that you absolutely need to wear with a kimono, but I still wanted to make it. As these first pieces will not be seen, I opted for a hybrid approach and cut the pieces to my size. Originally, in Japan, bleached cotton or sarashi came in narrow bolts and any extra fabric was folded to the side and no fabric was ever cut or wasted. I am however going to still finish all my pieces with French seams or felt seams as needed. I will be showing you this with more detail when I make the kimono. As opposed to male kimonos, female kimonos have openings on the sleeves to further accommodate the layers of fabric. As hadagi have very short sleeves, they have this opening at the bottom. I am finishing my seams with a felt seam at the bottom of my sleeves and a roll hem on both sides. Because this is another weird thing for us. In Japan, sleeves for a kimono are usually finished before you attach them to the body. You don't need to finish it this way, but I found it is actually easier and you get very clean edges, so if you can, it is worth the time. I also saw the size of the haragi. Pay special attention to the notches here, as the female kimonos have a side opening called miyatsuguchi, and it will be quite annoying having to unsew it later. There is a notch to position the sleeve, another for the gap, and one more for the opening at the bottom. You only need to sew between those two notches, try not to get confused. I hand sew all my edges by hand using a whip stitch, however if you are a kimono enthusiast you will know the correct technique is called unshin and it is very similar to a running stitch. As the results are similar on the outside, I just used the technique that was more comfortable to me because I wasn't very good at doing the unchin one and I thought it would just be a bit shorter to do it this way. It still took me quite a while to finish it. And now I just needed to attach the sleeves to my haragi. I turned my bodies inside out around the sleeve and I just had to sew a straight line from notch to notch making sure it's aligned at the top as well. If you did your sides correctly, there should be an opening just below the sleeves. The final step was to attach a piece of bias tape to the collar. And the piece is now completed. Let's move on to the Nagajuban. The Nagajuban is similar to the Hadagi but longer, so you will need more fabric for it. I aligned my pattern with the edge and put weights on top. I folded the fabric at the top and aligned my shoulder seam with the fold. Then I was able to mark all the lines. I recommend you to use the ruler because all the lines are straight. Oh, and of course, in this channel, we use cats instead of weights sometimes. Once I made sure all my pieces fitted, I started cutting them one by one. The sleeve of the Nagajuban is longer than the Hadagi, and I will be sewing the bottom part completely using French seams. Then 
I'm going to use the Marumi template to sew a kerf to the sleeve. You can choose your favorite kerf, but usually the female kimonos are rounder. I will draw the rest of the line and I will be sewing this edge up to the notch. Once again, I am ironing all the hems inwards so I can hand sew them. And here is a kimono tip. Cut a piece of cardboard with a rounded edge like the one on your sleeve and place it inside the sleeve before you iron it to the side. You can of course cut the excess fabric and clip the corner instead, but this way is more traditional and I think it's actually more secure. Once again, it was time to do a lot of hand sewing, but it was quite relaxing so I regret nothing. Let's carry on with the bodice. I cut the front open because I cheated and I cut my back pieces as a single one. If you are making a female version, there should be a small gap and sewn at the top of the back as well, so I cut that. In any case, it should look like this in the end, with a seam at the center back. As opposed to the hadagi, you do not want to cut the collar. Instead, you just want to dry it on your fabric and this will be your sewing line. Notice the curve at the top is just for the female pattern. And don't forget to cut the shoulder seam fold up to the notches of the collar. The front panels need an extra piece at the front in order to overlap. I am going to sew it. Then I am going to fold this piece inwards and hide the edges. I have seen this done in different ways, some of them are single, some of them are double, but this seemed to be the easiest method for me. If you fold the edge a bit over the previous stitching line, you will be able to sew this with the sewing machine, but of course I did it by hand. It is time to sew the sides. Once again, look at the notches because you want to leave a gap under the sleeves and sewn in the female version. And with all the hems and seams finished like I showed you with the hadagi, I was able to attach the sleeves. The sleeves are actually the most likely part to come undone, so I recommend you to sew a few extra stitches to reinforce them. The Naga Juban is just missing the collar. But first, you want to draw a line on your overlap panels following the line of your collar. I actually drew mine all the way down to the waist, but I have seen several variations of Juban with different lengths and I couldn't tell which one is the correct one. Feel free to leave a comment if you know the answer. I also drew the sewing lines on the collar piece and remember that this is just for the female version. The male version is actually just straight lines and it's much easier to do I think. Finally, starting from the center, I pinned the collar matching the lines as best as I could. It may take a couple of attempts to get this piece right, so be patient. Once you get it right, fold the seam allowance inwards and once again, following the lines, finish the color by hand or by machine. There are some small curves in the collar, so make sure you pin it well before you sew it. And with this, the Nagajuban was done. Or almost. In order to wear a juban properly, you will need an extra collar called Han Eri. This is just a rectangular piece of fabric hand sewn to the collar. This way, it was easy to take it off and replace it if it was too old or add a splash of color to your undergarments. 
I actually tried using the unchain technique to attach this piece and I regret not using it earlier because it was actually much faster. Think of it as a running stitch with very short stitches on one side. And don't forget to leave the bottom part open to introduce your color stiffener or erishin. Now, erishins are usually made with hard, flexible plastic, but I couldn't find anything similar, so I decided to experiment and made my own with buckram, which is something that you use for hats. I needed three layers of this material, which I sewed together, and I also decided to put another piece of fabric on top to make sure my fabric would slide easier through the neck. If you are wondering, I ironed the piece so it got that loop shape, and I had to use a safety pin to get the piece through because it was still a bit too thick, but it works so I'm happy about it. Let's make the susoyoke next. The susoyoke is kind of a wrap skirt made with several panels. If you remember, fabric at the time came in narrow bolts, so that is why I am cutting several rectangles that I am going to be sewing together. But it would be okay to make it as a continuous length nowadays. I sewed together the four shorter rectangles with French seams. And I also sew an overlap panel on each side. With another French seam, I sew the longer panel at the top. And then I folded the sides inwards. After hand sewing the sides, I folded the hem as well. And of course, it was time for more hand sewing. And the worst of it is not that I had to do it, it's that I didn't need to because I could have used my machine. But I like it this way. It was time to insert the himo at the top. The susayoke will be more resistant if you make a long continuous piece inserted in the fold. This side is finished the same way as the hem. Just make sure to secure the sides as well. You are going to need several ties to fasten your yuban and your kimono. You can make a koshihimo with a very long piece of fabric. You want to fold it in half and sew the raw edges, leaving a gap in the middle so we can turn it. Now, I figure if I sew a piece of thread to each corner before I sew it, it will be easier to turn them and they will look more traditional. This works to a degree. Before I turn my fabric, I ironed the seam allowances to one side and this helped a lot to make it look smooth. I could see the red thread on the inside, but I definitely did not make it long enough, so I had to resort to just using a stick to turn my fabric. The thread, however, works super well keeping those edges pointy and I really like the result. I perfected the technique attaching a thread on each side and ironed my koshihimo so the fold would be in the middle and the edges looked like arrowheads. A final knot at the top and they were done. The technique I used to make the datejime is exactly the same, just with a stronger fabric. Just remember, you won't need the arrow shape at the edges. I did try using rolled hems at the edges, but I did not like the results. 
You can also sew two rectangles together if you prefer, whatever is easier for you. The last piece I'm going to show you today is the tabby. You will definitely need to test this pattern as tabby are worn very tight to the skin and it is very easy to get them too tight or too loose. I use a thicker fabric for this pattern. My cotton has a little bit of a stretch but this is not needed to make the tabby. First I sew the top of the tabby. And I made sure to clip that little corner in the middle. I did the same with the other foot and the lining pieces. And right sides together, I sew the fabric and the lining together at the top. If you iron the hem seam words before you turn it, it will be easier to turn it. I overlapped the pieces at the back a couple of centimeters and sew them together. I also sew around the perimeter to make the fabric into one. And it was time to sew the sole. Only go around the edges and leave the front part unsewn for now. At the front, you will need to slightly gather the toes so they match the fabric at the bottom. And I use a zigzag stitch to reinforce the sides. Adding the lining to this part was a bit tricky because I had to fold all the fabric towards the inside before I put the fabric for the lining on top and sew around the edges leaving a gap so I could turn the fabric. Finally, I just had to sew a few closures to the sides and finish the tabby. I opted for a traditional looking closure, but I had to cheat and use hooks instead of the traditional Japanese Kohase closures, because I couldn't find them anywhere here in England. And this was all the underwear part of my cosplay finished, but of course there are many more pieces to go. And this is how the traditional kimono and the garments look. If you have seen my Instagram stories and TikTok, you will know just getting dressed this far it took me about three hours. I am not a kimono expert and I don't claim to be one and I'm learning. But I did my very best to research every single piece of clothing to make this cosplay believable and accurate. I will be posting how I made the rest of the kimono in my next videos, and if you want to see it, feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. I will link all the patterns in the description, and I will be seeing you in the next adventure. Bye!